So I had a friend that worked uh, in a temp agency, and so they sent me to a couple of different jobs, and I think it was the third job that I went to was working for a region manager for a bank, and it was the region appraisal manager. I was doing phone lists on Excel. I was uh, just sort of organizing paperwork, um, and I still, you know, I had no idea what <laughs> an appraisal was. I didn't even read an appraisal. So I started out sort of uh, scheduling for about 15 appraisers over three counties, and that was a full-time job, and I hated every single minute of it. <laughs> I actually went to my boss and said, I look for a new job every night, so don't be surprised when I quit. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host. Dustin Harris. Welcome, everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out in the podcast chair. Got another appraiser stories for you today. I'm super excited. Uh, it's been a, you know, these have been off and on, and, and they're they're very, very popular uh, with the downloads. I watch the numbers uh, once in a while, and uh, people like to see, I guess we're voyeurs at heart, right? We, we, we look through people's closets for a living, and uh, we dive into appraiser lives for uh, fun. Uh, so I'm excited to have uh, a guest on with me. I want to first remind you, we are sponsored by Data Master, and Data Master, of course, is rolling out Data Master 6 across the country. Check it out. Go to their website. It is datamasterusa.com. Once again, datamasterusa.com. We're sponsored by OREP Insurance. OREP is the E&O that I use, that I recently renewed with, had a great experience, saved money again. That's OREP Insurance. It's OREP.org, O-R-E-P.org. And finally, we're sponsored by Alamode. Alamode has been a sponsor here from the very beginning. They are the software that I use. I use them for a reason, folks. They save me time. They save me money. They save me money. Let me repeat that one more time. They save me money. Go to Alamode.com or 800 800- a la mode for more information. Well, folks, like I mentioned, we do have a guest on the program. It is an appraiser stories where we get to dive into his history, find out a little bit about him and what makes him tick. Mr. Brian Melsheimer. Welcome to the program, Brian. Hi, Dustin. It's great to, great to be here. It is good. Good to be here. Uh, good to have you here. You and I met, as we were talking off the air, we met a couple years ago at one of the expos, and you told me about uh, uh, something that you would probably say when you were on uh, on the air. And here we are, three years later, meeting up and having a conversation. I can't wait to hear that story. I'm not going to give anybody uh, a heads up yet. They'll just have to wait, but this is going to be a good story. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> All right, Brian. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Let's uh, let's just dive into this. Uh, uh, just spend a few minutes. Tell me a little bit about your history, where you're calling in from. Um, folks don't even know where you're at right now and uh, what got you into appraising. So I live in uh, Nevada City, which is in the state of California in the Sierra Nevada foothills. I, lo- I love how you um, clarify that because I, I guarantee you, as soon as someone says Nevada, oh, he's in Nevada, right? Uh, you get that all the time, right? We do. Um, and I actually just officiated a wedding. So I had to look up the history of that. Uh, <laughs> one of the, one of the parties was from Nevada. So, okay. um, Nevada city was first and there's, you know, there's some ill will between the two parties. So <laughs> That's funny. It was fun. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so when I got started into the appraisal business, I didn't even know what an appraisal was to be <laughs> totally honest. Right. Um, my, my parents didn't own a house growing up. Um, and uh, so, so basically, I graduated college uh, with a degree in economics and immediately needed a job. Um, so oh, this sounds familiar. Works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had bills to pay, uh, food to eat, that sort of thing. So I had a friend that worked uh, in a temp agency. And so he, they sent me to a couple of different jobs. And I think it was the third job that I went to was working for a region manager for uh, an appraisal for a bank. And it was the region appraisal manager. Get out. So you you started as a temp? Yes. Uh, That's and, crazy. And to be honest, I was doing phone lists on Excel. I was uh, just sort of organizing paperwork. Um, and I still, you know, I had no idea what <laughs> an appraisal was. I didn't even read an appraisal. So I started out sort of uh, scheduling for about 15 appraisers 
over um, over three counties, and that was a full time job, and I hated every single minute of it. <laughs> I actually went to my boss and said, "I look for a new job every night, so don't be surprised when I quit." Wow. And um, <laughs> that's all. She no, said, well, nothing like putting your boss on his heels, right? Well, and I mean, I was just wanting to be honest that, sure. hey, you know, I, this isn't something that I want to do for the rest of my life. And so they said, well, we like you. We like your work ethic. Would you want to become an appraiser? And I said, well, I still don't know exactly what they do, but I do know they have a company car and they're not in the office all the time. So that sounds good to me. So wow. I, yeah, so um, they did, they had a whole training program and, and sent me to Texas to, to do my my training program. And um, that was 15 years ago. Holy cow. So 15 years, here you are. Tell us a little bit about your business now, as far as the setup. What does your office look like? Do you have uh, employees? What uh, d- Describe the scene that's around you, Brian. Um, so I'm a residential appraiser full-time. I uh, don't do any commercial. Okay. Uh, my wife works with me. Okay. Um, she sort of handles the front end of reports, um, but I handle the inspections, scheduling, uh, writing up reports, and, and, and that sort of thing. In 2017, I did 896 appraisals. <laughs> okay, good. I love, I so, love real numbers, man. This is great. I am I am one of those guys that does uh, desktop appraisals, okay. uh, and I'm and I'm not ashamed of it. Good for you. Um, it, it's for a major lender that otherwise would be doing BPOs or yep. non appraisal uh, products. Now, that. Brian, you know if you refuse to do those desktops, they're going to have to order a full appraisal, at least a drive by. <sighs> Uh, that's not true because <laughs> I do refuse to do some that I feel uncomfortable with yep. and not always do they order a yep. drive-by. Yep. So, yep. Um, okay. uh, but anyway, it's a good supplement on average. I do about 35 full appraisals a month. So I, okay. I do stay pretty busy. Yeah. Um, it's a mixed bag of, of AMC direct lenders. Um, I've really been trying to build my non lending appraisal business this year and it has so far doubled. Wow. Really? Yeah, um, you know, I started uh, I started a blog. I know you've had Ryan Lundquist yeah, on, yeah, sure. on on the program before. Um, we're in the same group of uh, of local appraisers at, gotcha. out of the Sacramento area, yep, and yep. Um, he's taught some really good classes on on branching out and long non lender work. And so I've started a blog and uh, redid a website, and um, those are really small things that I think appraisers can do to, to increase that sort of business. Absolutely. Yeah. Good for you. I, you know, I've, I've been pushing that train for a long, long time. It's good to see, uh, good to see people like yourself uh, doing uh, something about that because you know what, let's face it. Lender work is up and down, uh, sometimes more down than up. And, uh, and to have that, uh, that, that type of private work coming in as well, I think is, is, is huge, huge for our future. And over the last 15 years, you know, it's, it's changed um, quite a bit. I mean, AMCs were introduced. Uh, I mean, I worked directly for a bank for the first about seven years of my career. Um, and then, you know, AMCs were introduced and, and who knows what the future is going to hold. Mm-hmm. If it's hybrid products, if it's, um, you know, full appraisals like they are today, or is it direct lender or, or what, what is it going to be? No one really knows. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. All right. Interesting. So tell me more about uh, the area that you work then. So you're, you're Northern California or do you call it central California? What, what, how do you refer to that? Uh, definitely Northern California. Okay. All right. Um, and so Nevada County specifically is, is most of my coverage area. I, I go to one part, parts of one adjacent County. Okay. Um, so this area dates back to the gold rush uh, uh-huh, to about sure. 1850. Um, and, and so we have homes that were for the gold mine owners, mm. the, the, the old Victorians. And then we also have the, the minor shacks, wow, um, which are literally built in the same time, but they are one bedroom actual <laughs> shacks. Nice. Um, and, and what's, what's sort of interesting in this area is that there have been no big builders that have come in and built subdivisions. Uh, most of the homes were built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s by by your single handyman contractor. Really? Um, Why is so, that? Why is that? I mean, the, the whole world is going to subdivisions. That's really interesting. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think there it's a real small community. There's never been a huge, big employer that has come okay. in. Um, and, and so there's a lot of, um, you know, independent people um, and, and people that work for themselves. And, and so I think contracting was actually a really... You know, in the in the seventies and eighties, it was a really lucrative business sure. to be in, um, and, and so 
you know, it's it, it's funny that the house that I'm in right now is definitely not like the one behind me. Right, right. Um, definitely not like the one next door or the manufactured home on the other side. Well, that so. sucks for you as an appraiser, right? <laughs> It is. Yeah. It is very difficult, um, you know, to deal with the lenders, especially on that end, because and guidelines were all written for subdivision type areas. And, I'm, and I know you're familiar with this, too. Um, but, you know, that also, to me, it gives me a leg up being yeah. being where I am over an appraiser that might not be familiar with this area. Yeah, you know, I'm actually going to drill down a little bit on that because I I, I, I sometimes hear my listeners' uh, words in my, in my head, if that makes sense. I, I know what they're asking right now. They're saying, okay, I'm, on one hand, Brian, you're saying that you're doing desktop uh, work. Uh, on the other hand, you're saying that, you know, as an, as an appraiser, there's some benefit in not having some congruent neighborhoods. Because I think a lot of appraisers look at those desktop or hybrid uh, type products as, okay, well, that might work for subdivisions, but it certainly doesn't work where, where I live. So there's kind of a dichotomy I'm hearing. Uh, you, you, on one hand, you're doing desktop work, but on the other hand, you're saying, you know, there's a little bit of job security for me because, uh, you know, a computer can't, uh, can't do what I can do. So, so you're 100% right. Um, I, I actually don't do desktops in my direct market area. Oh, I interesting. I do desktops okay. sure. in, in an area that's about 45 minutes away. That does uh, have subdivisions. Still, correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. It's interesting. all subdivisions, actually. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, you know, and I'll dabble down there every now and then and, and do a full interior report just so I'm, you know, making sure I'm not utilized, you know, not Got to be geographically competent. Exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, I say well, that, you know, I say that you, that way. You know, some people are going to be screaming at me. Say, well, why did he say it that way, sarcastically? Because you know, I did a, a program. I don't know. It was a year ago, maybe, on geographic competency and how it's n- not really a thing as far as the way that appraisers kind of put it. And uh, man, I got beat up in the social media over that. <laughs> so I think you know, if you had actually listened to the program rather than just and and the and the lady that started says, admittedly, I never even listened to this podcast, but the 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 title alone tells me this guy has no clue what he's talking about. So I, I like to be sarcastic a little bit. Anyway, carry on. Well, I mean, for one instance, for me in California to sit here and do reports in Florida, maybe I'm not sure. geographically competent. But if, if it's in a close enough area where I still travel there, you know, that's the closest Trader Joe's. <laughs> so, so we have to go yeah. down there. Yeah. You know, you got to do know it. a lot about the market. <laughs> um, you know, I, I feel comfortable appraising there and, and not missing anything, especially for the scope of work of, of what desktops um, entitled. So. Okay, cool. Are you wine country? Um, no, not okay. at all. Uh, okay. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to visualize where you're, where you're kind of located there. So I've got a mastermind uh, student up, uh, kind of in that area that, uh, that's, uh, you know, Napa Valley area, but you're not, you're not that area. Closer to Lake Tahoe. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Right yeah. on. Do you cover Lake Tahoe by chance? That'd be a unique. You know, I don't. Um, so Lake Tahoe is interesting. There's about five MLS systems that surround Lake Tahoe. Wow. Um, that don't communicate with each oh other. Oh my gosh. What a nightmare. Um, so you can sort of specialize in one area or you really have to, to evolve around, you know, being a member of all the MLSs. <laughs> and you'd be surprised, uh, especially with the high real estate uh, values that are up there. A lot of appraisers come from out of the area oh, yeah. specifically to get really high fees. Yep. So yep. Um, there is a lot of competition for, for some stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, stick stick with what you know there. and, and uh, Yep. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, so uh, you've been doing this 15 plus years. Uh, most disturbing or scary encounter you've had as an appraiser, Brian? So I once thought I saw a dead body. <laughs> okay. So this is the story. This is the story. So, so, so Brian comes up to me uh, uh, three years ago. He reminded me of this before we started today, and I'd completely forgotten about it, but I was packing up my stuff at one of these conferences. And uh, w- was it an offer to be on this program? Is that what you were talking about? Because you said something about uh, the, the story that I want to tell is about this possible dead body. And I said, I can't yeah. wait. Yeah. So I had heard your your mini interviews that that you do at the expo. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. I said no, I really want to do a full one because yep. I want to be able to tell this story. So, <laughs> okay, cool, cool. I can't uh, wait, man. Bated breath. Here we go. So, so actually, the day before, um, I had the honor of of appraising a, a true hoarder house, hmm. um, which I'm sure most appraisers have seen at least one in their mm-hmm. day. Um, and, and this guy actually hoarded stuff on the inside and the outside of a property. Um, so there were literally pathways going through the outside, couldn't open doors. I believe there was a dead rat in the shower, oh my gosh. um, real fun. Um, so, and, and I'd worked for, for, for a lender at this point. Um, so I, you know, we ended up, uh, I, one of those that you just can't even write the appraisal. Oh, for. Yeah. 
Um, so lo and behold, the next day, I, there's an order for a multifamily that it's on my schedule. And I look it up and sure enough, it's the same owner. Oh my gosh, really? Yep. Different and house, but same owner. Different house, same owner. Wow. So I call my manager and I said, hey, remember that one from yesterday? Right. You, you want to come out with me on this one? Um, this one's, I just have a feeling it, it could be interesting. <laughs> um so we got there and, and, you know, wasn't necessarily a full blown hoarder house from the outside, but it was in pretty bad shape. Okay. Uh, we started with the unit that was above a garage. Um, and first thing I remember is opening the door, walking inside and 50 flies hitting me. Oh in the my face. gosh. Uh, no floor coverings in the whole place. Uh, the shower didn't have any exterior siding. Um, and on the inside where the tile or fiberglass would be, there was actually a stapled shower curtain on the inside of the shower. What? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was unlivable for sure. Uh. Um, and so we're sort of going through and I'm trying to be as polite as possible, finish the inspection, that sort of thing. Um, and, and we walk into a room and my manager says, oh, is that door over there? you know, a closet. And he says, Oh yeah, yeah. That's a closet over there. And I thought, well, my manager pointed that out. I, I better go at least peek inside. So I go and open the door and I see a leg just with an ankle showing like a pant leg, oh my and an God. ankle showing and a foot. And at first I thought, Oh, oh it's a prosthetic leg. Okay. <laughs> don't worry. And I thought those are everywhere. Well, I mean, they place it in a closet. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's so like, kept looking and sure enough it's a whole full body of someone motionless in a closet not moving oh my gosh so i said whoa someone's in here and i just freaked out <laughs> and just left and, and your went trainer's outside. next just, to you or at this point <laughs> yeah yeah the manager's next to me and he is actually he came outside and he was laughing um <laughs> and he was like are you okay and i was like yeah that sort of freaked me out and the owner sort of ran over there and said, Bob, I told you to leave. I told you to get out of here. Oh, my gosh. But I never saw that second person walk or leave or hear a movement or anything. So we ended up finishing the inspection, uh, do, do the two other units. And afterwards, I'm, I'm really freaked out. And I remember driving back to the office going, I, I feel like I have a moral duty to turn this person in. I, I mean, I work for this company and that's who I was representing, but I feel like I have a moral duty to call the cops and say, Hey, there's, there's something here. So we got back to the office and, and I told my manager that, and he says, well, we can't just do that. We need to call this up the chain. So about three hours later, I've had a conference call with HR and upper, upper management. I think the chief appraiser was even on the, on the phone at one time. And they said, you know, we think that's okay. Go ahead and call the sheriff. Okay. So the sheriff actually went out to the house and they called me back. And um, I mean, this was three hours later, so who knows what happens, but right. they just said the man was severely intoxicated. Uh, wow. So, and, and not a dead body. They, so didn't, they, but didn't, I, they didn't find I, I Bob really in the freezer. Fully, I mean, it was a lot of time where they could have done anything. So you, you never know what you're going <laughs> to see. In this they could have cut him up and, sure. and buried him in the lake. Well, I don't even want to go there. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm laughing because now it's funny. At the time, I'm sure it was not. But tell me a funny story. Let's get in a lighter mood. <laughs> So I, I'm sure we've all sort of experienced something like this, but uh, so last year on the 4th of July, I had just completed an appraisal for uh, a homeowner who already had his house on the market. Um, he had explained to me, he thought his, his house was listed a little high and he wanted my professional opinion. Okay. He said, I'd be glad to help, help him out. So I think I delivered it, uh, you know, noon on the Friday before 4th or, you know, within business hours, but he never called me back on the 4th of July. I get a phone call and I suspected it was him, but I wasn't going to answer. I, I was with family and friends and I try to separate my business and, Good and, for you. and family life. And um, so then another phone call and then another phone call and another phone <laughs> uh -oh. call. Like, so okay. he had left, I believe it was six messages. Oh my gosh. Phone. So I said, all right, so this, something must've been, been really wrong with this. Let me, let me at least just listen to these messages. And so the first one was, I think this value is so low, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then the second was, I don't understand the adjustments. I don't know. How did you do this? And then the, so the, the next one was, you know, this is just really unfair. I don't know why, but this is just, just really unfair. 
And the next one was, I really just don't like the number that you came in at. And, and so it's oh my on and on and on. And finally, his last one, you're getting pretty worked up. His last one, he was very calm. And he says, you know, I, I really got to apologize. I, I, I don't even know how to read an appraisal. And so I called my brother and he sort of walked me through it. And, and now I understand it a, a little more. I, I'd still like to talk to you about it, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really sorry. So, He's softening. Within business hours, I, I called him back, talked him through the appraisal. Um, and, and in researching this story, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I just happened to look up the, the, the appraisal and to see how much, or if a house sold. The house sold within 5% of what I Oh, my gosh. So, Gotta love this. Yeah, Gotta I love mean. this. It's interesting how things kind of take care of themselves, Brian. I, uh, I, I, I've started employing in my business uh, what I call the pastor pause. Uh, the pastor pause is this. I, I once had a friend that was a pastor and he would get calls, you know, not like that one, but he would get urgent calls, you know. Oh, my gosh, my, my wife and I are fighting. We need your help, pastor. You need to come over right now. Right. And uh, and whether he answers the phone or not, you know, this that would be the message. And so he started employing what he uh, he didn't refer to this as the pastor pause. I did. But but he would he would basically say no matter what, even if he could go that second, he would say, you know, what, I'm tied up with something right now. I'll be there in 45 minutes. Right. And he said, inevitably, in 45 minutes things get worked out. <laughs> so if you wait a little bit, sometimes things work themselves. Now, sometimes they get worse, but sometimes they work themselves out. So. And, and sometimes that, that can be true for the, on the appraiser side as well, is that, you know, if you sometimes take a step back and maybe wait till the next day yep. to fire off that email yep. or, or have that phone call, it's, you know, you're a little bit more calm, collected and, and eh, maybe I won't say that mm. in that email mm. quite, mm. quite as blunt. Yeah. So, some, uh, sometimes it's best just to write it and then hit delete. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love it. We're talking with Brian uh, Melsheimer out of uh, Nevada City, California, uh, an appraiser. Uh, thanks for being on, Brian. Uh, I want to pause here and, and, and of course, uh, talk about our sponsors briefly, and then we'll jump right back into it. Uh, we are sponsored, of course, by OREP Insurance. OREP is the uh, E&O that I'm using right now. Uh, I switched about three, three and a half years ago, and uh, – tell you folks, I've never looked back. The benefits that I get uh, and the fact that I've saved money every single... I didn't think I would this year, actually. Um, the first quote came back and I called Lori and I said, what the heck, Lori? This is like 20% higher than last year. And she said, hold on. That's just the first quote. That's the great thing about OREP Insurance is uh, they're brokers for many different uh, insurance carriers. And sure enough, uh, the, the quote that came back that we finally settled on was a savings over the year before, even though we're doing a higher volume. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, OREP. Folks, check them out if you've not already. Go to OREP.org. That's O-R-E-P.org. Of course, we are sponsored by Data Master. Data Master, a company that I have known and worked with for many, many years. Uh, I'm sometimes asked, well, Dustin, you know, how often do you use Data Master? Unfortunately, <laughs> and I say that uh, with with emphasis, uh, I can't do it all the time because I actually, as as Brian talked about, you know, just one area covering, you know, with five different MLSs. I have five different MLSs in my area that I subscribe to, that I pay money for, five and only two of them, unfortunately, have agreements with Data Master. And they're not even the ones that I use the most, unfortunately. I just work a very rural area. So financially, it doesn't make a lot of sense for Data Master to be in that area. But I'll bet you they're in your area because they are in the big areas with lots of appraisers. Check them out. Go to datamasterusa.com. Check out their map. If you are not using Data Master, folks, you need to. 30 to 60 minutes per report. That's not just a sales pitch. That is accurate. When I do use Data Master, it is huge. I am so grateful for them because I don't do all my data entry, but I hire it out and I pay other people to do it and I save money using Data Master. Datamasterusa.com is where you go. One more time, datamasterusa.com. Speaking of saving money and efficiencies in your appraisal business, why not use the very best software out there? It is all a mode. I've been with them for over 20 years. They've been in business for over 30 years, helping appraisers to do the very best job that they can in the limited amount of time that we have. Brian talked about, you know, this, this increase in volume and, and, and trying to keep up with things. Folks, you're going to want the best software out there to keep up and to be able to thrive and be successful as an appraiser. Alamode will help you to do that. Go to alamode.com or you can pick up the phone and call them. It's 800 Alamode. All right, folks, we are back. We're talking with Brian Melsheimer out of uh, Nevada City. 
California. I almost said Nevada. <laughs> I almost I, did. I, it. I was going to correct you. Don't worry. <laughs> Brian is an appraiser over 15 years. Uh, and uh, thanks for being on the program, Brian. I really appreciate you taking the time. You know, there's nothing in this for you other than just being kind hearted to, 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 to be willing to ch- tell your story. And I appreciate it. That's great. Great to be here. Good, good. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is, the, this is the part of the program that I really like to dig in and, and see what appraisers can teach other appraisers um, to, to, to not make the same mistakes that we've made, uh, to not reinvent the wheel, if you will, and, and maybe give some helpful tips and different things that, uh, that will be uh, beneficial to our listeners. So let's start, first of all, Brian, uh, with your, maybe your biggest failure in life. It doesn't necessarily have to be appraisal related. So, so I also know the next question that's coming, which would be your biggest success. Yeah, yeah, let's combine them. Um, and, and I actually sort of want to combine it because that's sort of the type of person that I am. And okay. If I have a failure, that I want to turn that around and, and Love I'd it. like to make it a big success. Love so, it. like I said, I worked for a lender for about uh, for seven, eight years of my career, um, and then sort of uh, once once the mortgage meltdown hit, uh, like a lot of appraisers, I was laid off. Um, not really sure what I wanted to do. I actually think I didn't even want to continue appraising. Um, but, but I did and, uh, sort of started my own appraisal company in, in 2011 okay. and had a trainee and, um, had an, an assistant, added a bookkeeper, um, wow. you know, rented an office space and was sort of doing pretty well in my opinion. Um, and in September of 2013, our local MLS, which was its own MLS system, decided to share all of its data with, um, four neighboring MLS services. Wow. Yeah. So literally overnight, uh, the next month, looking back on, on, on my revenue, um, my revenue dropped by 45%. Holy cow. That's a hit. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I didn't even know the sharing was coming. Um, mm. and I think I was at that point, I was sort of a nose to the ground, do as much volume as possible. Um, you know, I've got these other people that are relying on me for their income. And once that happened, I had to close my office, move back home, um, work in the basement, uh, sort of, so, so to speak, as, as like a lot of appraisers do lay off the assistant, uh, the bookkeeper right away. And, and then eventually the trainee. Um, so I really felt like I had hit rock bottom and that my business was sort of a failure. Um, and so I really had to rethink my business process, uh, right about that time is when I discovered the appraisal coach podcast, not, uh, not to say that you were, <laughs> you changed my, my entire business. Oh, I philosophy. did. I did. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> but your tips really do. They, they helped me. Um, and, and I really needed that positivity in my life about the industry. Um, and, and, and just, to say, okay, I can, I can get through this. Um, and, and so at the same time, uh, my license was about to expire. And so I took a live use PAP class. Um, and, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but it was the <laughs> best use PAP class I've ever taken. Okay. And I, you know, it was more that I, I think I had done most of my continuing education online hmm. and it was sort of like, wow, I can, this feels good to get in a classroom uh, with other appraisers and to have discussions and, mm-hmm. you know, that not everything is so negative in this industry. Um, so like I said, I went to the conference and, and that was, you know, I learned a lot, um, you know, even that maybe the message wasn't exactly what I was hoping for, but you learn a lot. And to learn what Fannie Mae thinks of appraisers is helpful in my right, opinion. Right, right, right. Um, so since then, uh, you know, I've really changed my business. And that's one thing that I, I do on a regular basis, at least a couple times a year to sort of step back and say, let's examine my process and what can I do to make this process more efficient? Um, do I need to learn? Uh, I've, I've written a couple spreadsheets and I've hired people to write spreadsheets to import comps into software? Um, do I know, do I need to add another screen? Do I need to mm. do, what mm. can I do to be more efficient, to do my job better and quicker uh, because that equates to more money? Well, let's, let's, let's actually drill down on that and, and, and just have you give uh, at least one helpful tip to appraisers that, uh, that you've learned, that you've employed, um, that you can pass on to help them to, to be more efficient, more effective. So um, I, I wrote my own spreadsheet, which I do hope to, to sell in the future, actually. Um, but I, I wrote a spreadsheet uh, that I thought would help me the most. Um, and, and I don't, 
I am not by any means know everything about Excel, mm-hmm. uh, but there are people out there that do. So yep. I use Upwork, um, yeah. which I, uh, which is a great resource. Um, y- you can find people from all over the world. Um, and you know, from 10 cents an hour to, you know, $200 <laughs> an hour. Right. Um, and, and I, they have really, I, I have one particular person. He's actually in Poland. Um, that he helps me on a regular basis and has made, saved me. It's almost like a data master, but it's Mm. in Excel spreadsheet. So it it saves me hours at a time, um, on each report. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is awesome. I I love Upwork and Fiverr and some of these other resources that you can reach out and, and employ people all over the world. Uh, cause there's some talented, talented people out there just wanting to help. Uh, so thank you for that. That 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 is good. So talk to me a little bit about uh, maybe get your crystal ball out here, uh, Brian. Tell me tell me where where are we going as a profession, and then I'm going to combine that with the next question: is uh, where do you see yourself in this whole you know world in the next three to five years? So I mean, I do really think that technology is really going to take over our industry, uh, and and if you look back, you know, 15, 20 years, it, it sort of has already. But it, it's going to keep going. And, and I think appraisers really need to realize that they should be analysts, not typists, yep. not yep. race car drivers, not <laughs> data entry. Uh, well, come on, race car drivers. People. I mean, every appraiser uh, is a race car driver. It'd be, right? it'd be fun. Uh, I've heard about your <laughs> oh, speeding ticket stories. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, I got another one last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, cost of doing business. Right? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> so we may have to change the way we do things today. Uh, three comps on a grid Mm. might be a thing of the past Mm. and you might have to include the best 15 sales Uh, may not be in grid form. Maybe it will be, who knows? Uh, You may not be the ones doing the inspection on the house. Mm. Um, But, but the the point is that, is that the appraiser needs to be able to analyze the market and and report uh, based on whatever spoke scope of work is given to them. Yeah. Yeah. If if appraisers have not heard the uh, episode um, with uh, uh, Ernie Durbin that I did on uh, on Harbor Pilots. Just type in Harbor Pilots on the uh, on the podcast, and you'll find it. It is, I think, I think that's what we're seeing, and I think that's what you're reflecting as well. You know, we need to become if we're going to be viable into the future, we've got to become the expert in our area and and in what we do. Because computers, though though they are huge and though they are powerful and though they do wonderful things. They are not harbor pilots. They're not the experts, and they can't make those uh, those determinations that sometimes a local appraiser needs to make. So I, I love your outlook, Brian. Thank you. Yeah, I even heard a, a good example that um, you know Google's making these self driving cars and self driving mm-hmm. big rigs, and that you know for that long haul truck driver, mm-hmm. Google probably will or, or automation will probably replace that long haul sure, truck driver. Sure. But when it gets to, to Walmart or wherever you're going to back that truck into the bay, they're still going to need that expert there. Yeah. Um, that's a so great it's along the same lines yeah. as, as you know, that that's what the appraiser is going to be is that expert, not that long haul truck driver. That's, um, you know, maybe driving comp photos yep. or, you yep. know, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. So. Love it. Love it. Okay. You ready for the lightning round, my friend? I am. Okay, here we go. Uh, number one, inside out or outside in? Outside in always, no matter what the weather. Wow, okay. Yeah, Confident. I just <laughs> suck it up and do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, tape roller or laser? Laser, a disto. Love it. Uh, which one do you have, do you know? Oh, what is it? The it's I-7500? It's, okay. Oh, that's a good one. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could go back, I think that's the one I'd do. Uh, tablet, computer, or clipboard and pen? I use my iPhone 7 Plus. Love it. Okay, I'm, I'm with an 8 Plus too. So uh, appraisal software? Total. No surprise. Uh, favorite thing to do when you're not appraising, Brian? I spend a lot of time outdoors, uh, hiking, camping. You look like an outdoor. Outside. People can't see. I can see you. <laughs> they can't. You look like an outdoors guy. It's the beard. Yeah, it is. it is. I'll bet you if you scan down, I'd see some Birkenstocks on your feet or something like that, right? Uh, maybe no maybe, right maybe, a, maybe a granola bar in your in your other hand. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and one, uh, uh, one goal for this year. So I really want to develop a technology to help, to help appraisers analyze the market. Love it. I'm working on that now and we'll, we'll see how that happens. Huge need for that. My friend, Brian Melshammer, uh, Nevada city, California. Thank you for being on my friend. Thank you. It was awesome.
Folks, I'll tell you, it's, it is awesome, and, uh, and I'm hoping that, uh, that others will jump on. Uh, please reach out to me. Uh, you can get me two ways, uh, both email, okay? So the first one is thecoach at theappraisercoach.com. That comes to me. Uh, or you can reach out to my assistant, the assistant, the assistant at theappraisercoach.com, and uh, she will set you up with a time that we can sit down. Uh, I'm going to unpause or unmute uh, Brian for just a second. It wasn't bad, right? No, it was great. It okay. was fun. Okay. I had a great yeah. time. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a conversation. Yeah. So so those of you who are holding back thinking, oh, Dustin's so scary. I'm not scary, folks. We just have a fun time here, and we would love to hear your story, and so would other appraisers. Uh, and so please, please reach out to me. would love to have you on the program. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we will catch you next time. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. Thank you, Brian. That was awesome. Yeah, I had a great time. Thanks, Dustin. Good, good. I really appreciate you reaching out. Really do. Uh, these are really popular, and uh, you know, not enough appraisers are willing to get outside their their comfort zone, which I understand. I mean, it's scary, um, but uh, but uh, thank you for setting the example. And man, it's been, it's been fun, really fun to get to know you. It is. I, I, appraisers do need to get out of their comfort zone a little bit, especially you know, getting in front of realtors. It's it's mm-hmm. not awful. One thing I didn't even mention was like we there's a group of. I mean, there's in our area there's seven full-time, eight full-time appraisers, and five of us meet on a regular basis. A Shut times up. A year. Really? You yeah. talk to other appraisers? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I do with, I'm a member of, of an association, but that's down sort of in Sacramento, which okay. is ways away. Yeah. But um, we actually meet, you know, for lunch or, or do some little trainings. I'm not going to give them all my tips, but, you know. <laughs> You're going to hold the good the ones I, back, right? Yeah. Well, the way I look at it, I probably should have mentioned this on the podcast, is they shouldn't be my competition. The appraiser that's coming in from out of the area, that's my competition, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. is to eliminate those people. So it's, you know. <laughs> well, wait a second. You talked about a dead body before. I, I wouldn't use the word eliminate <laughs> no. right now. No, exactly. So. <laughs> well, Brian, thank well, you. Well, it was I, fun, Dustin. I yeah. appreciate it. Um, I'm a member of the all-star team too. And Love I, it. I really do. That's, that's a good, good resource. And, and the Facebook group is great. Yeah. I see your so posts. So it. man, I yeah. and thank you for being on and thank you uh, for taking this time. It, this has been a, a fun show really has. Awesome.